Hey guys, and welcome to the all new, all different Rebirth Cast, where we talk about the comic books I get from the week to week, every week, what comics I get, and then I do sometimes talk about other stuff that I want to talk about, or if there's not a lot of comics, I might add some stuff. But today, we're going to be talking about the comics that came out this week. I'm a little behind on these, so we're going to talk about first is Archie number 16 by Archie Comics. This is the new, all new Archie series. This is here, and the cover says Facing Cell Blossom is going to appear at the end. This book is. Pretty good. It's about um, Dalton, uh, Riverdale. It's cool that they did one about him because you don't see him, hasn't you haven't seen him much in the series. So I do kind of like that. And it's about him making this app because he's like the smart person about the most romantic places you are. I've the most romantic spots, and you have to rate them at the scale. I guess like one to ten. I'm not 100 percent sure, but you rate them what you think of it. And then obviously. Um, he's friends with Moose, uh, he helps him with, like, homework and stuff, so he, like, protects Dalton and stuff, that's cool, but then we see, um, uh, Reggie get the app and he uses it on, like, an old lady, and he gives a, I'm with stupid zero thoughts, like, you know, those mean things, he, like, uses it, abuses the power that he has and abuses it on people, but then we go back to Veronica, where so is her talking about her coming home soon, and about how she needs to get revenge on Chell Blossom, for Cummings is going to come in and destroy a house and wreck uh, her perfect world up because she decoyed hers. And that makes it all of her talking to Smithers about that. Then we have Jacket going into the place, um, Pops, and like has a one star, and then he gives him a burger, and he's being like all completely like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He had a bad review, so he's being all like pissed and stuff. Same with Smith Grundy, who just comes in, turns on a um, thing. And stuff what I would have given her. Like it says one half star, but why can't other people give them good stars? Like why does it have to be just this one person? Can't you do it where you give good stars? I don't I don't get that. Like somebody could give a bad score, but somebody could give a great score just because one person does that. Also Nancy Ward one star thinks he's all that. Sucks, makes me sick. Another person who um it looks like she's working at the paper for this school. And everybody, now it shows everybody in the next phase, I like it with stars above their heads, what they're rated. It's kind of, I think Dalton used this app, and then it became, like, really, um, made this app to do good, but then it gets to where it's, like, bad. Then he meets this other, um, what's her name? Sheila? Sheila? And gave her a score to two stars. Two stars? That's not that bad. Like, it was out of four, but if we go back on the last page and check, uh, I see three stars. If three stars is the most, then that's pretty damn good. That's like in the middle. You're not bad. That's not bad. It's only three stars, but... And then she, she's really mad at him for this, and then... He figures out he needs to go and stuff it. He's like, I can fix this. I can fix this. Goes home. All these things are gone that had this stuff on it for the app. And Reggie Mantle, six stars. Okay, so you can go both three. Reggie's just being an asshole and giving anybody six stars. And I don't know why anybody isn't going to, why don't a lot of people just do good things. But he's like, oh, I have a backup a plan. And he calls a friend. Then he goes to Mantle's house. We see Moose um, appear. He opens, Reggie opens the door. And we find out it's Moose. And he's like, holy shit, I'm, I'm going to get screwed. And he tries to stealth back out the back door. And he slips and falls. And he sees this big kaboom and so it's Moose. He looks like he's about to beat the shit out of him. Uh, he got the things back and uh, got the hard drive back with all the stuff for the app. Now he got rid of the app. And yeah, anybody did forgive him in time. He donated some type of fireworks show. And they were asking, and LT is narrating some of this at this part because he usually does that in every issue. Narrates a little bit, or somebody does. And then he um, it's like, I wonder what gave him the idea for the app. And he sees like, he likes Betty. Hmm, he likes Betty. I'm pretty sure that's Betty. So, yeah. Yeah, that's Betty. Yeah. There's a page, there's a picture of her on the next page. So, yeah, that's cool. And then we see, um, Cheryl Blossom and Jason Blossom talking about stuff of how he sees manipulating people. It's like, he's talking to Betty and all this stuff. And Betty tells her all her problems and everything. And then how... And then this is... Shit. Uh, how do you say it? Jason, this is... S A Y I D Swade Swade whoever I think that's the person Betty was dating and then she after Archie and then they got broken up or whatever so she's gonna pull some sin and do what she does be evil and yeah and then it has some stuff for the photo gallery for the Riverdale TV show what I've been watching and enjoying so I have the photo gallery for that because this is a as of recording this 
They're already three episodes into Riverdale. It's already out and has three episodes. So yeah, this is cool. Um, this is a cool book. I really enjoyed the next issue. Looks like it's gonna be fun as well. This is just a fun book. And I like how this one was based around Dalton mostly. So it gave you. Uh, so you get to learn about some of the other characters. You get to learn about him and Moose more. Reggie, you get to learn about more in his own book. I think a lot more. But you do get some stuff with him. So it's cool. Dalton got his own kind of story. So that was cool. And we got a little bit to Chelsea Blossom and what he's doing. Just if weird the cover says featuring Chelsea Blossom. One, two, three in the series. So it's not like featuring her. And I was like, oh, this is a Batman story featuring Superman. Like, you know what I mean? It's, and for the record, he wasn't in it that much. So, but for the more, issue 16, it's awesome. It's been my Mark Ward. Go check it out. Next, we're going to be talking about Power Rangers issue 11. This is about Billy. It's about Billy and Tommy Stranded. And I guess, the, I don't know where this is. It's either it's the future or an alternate reality, like a different Earth, maybe, or something. I don't know yet. It's not really, you can't really tell yet. And it starts off with everybody coming home to their parents, everybody except for Billy's parents and Tommy's parents are the only ones who don't have anybody, don't know where they are or whatever. So yeah. But then we see cut to where Tommy and Billy are, there's these giant statues of Rita and it looks like the Green Ranger. And they've taken on the world or something or have. It looks like almost everybody's gone. All the people are gone, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it has a big thing and they're watching some stuff on the monitor. And figuring, trying to figure out where they are, and then a black ranger shows up. It looks like the black ranger, but it's like a um, uh, what's it called like an armored guard or a guy with like he has like a gun and all this, uh, stuff. Like a he looks like he has an armored vest and all this stuff. He looks like a um SWAT kind of guy, but as a ranger, it's really cool. I actually like the design of a lot of the characters in this place. If it's the future or if it's the uh, alternate reality, it's cool. And it shows them uh, being out of the way because he sees like he has. Uh, where did you get that? And he sees the dagger. And I don't know why they can't crimp one of the Power Rangers. Is it that the powers are not working or did they use them all? I think I understand why um, Jason doesn't work. Uh, what's it called? Not Jason. Da -da -da -da. Tommy doesn't work because he used it on the last issue to give everybody else the power. So I can see why. He, he, I think it's not allowed to use it, but I don't know. I thought Billy had his coin, but I don't know how if it's the legitimate sort of work. But they find this, uh, they go to credit, go to the school, and they find out it's like, it looks like a prison or something, I don't know, and the guy, other guys, more guys have come, and they start shooting at him, it's, it's a cool little scene of Jimmy Child and stuff, and they escape, and then we go back to Goldo, who is still trapped in this thing, and Rita's acting like, why the Blue Ranger escapes and everything, and all this stuff, and then I think she, and then she think she left him out, I think, but it doesn't show it, I think she left him out, though. Then we go back to it and just checking the ruins side of the giant robot to see if they can find out where Billy and Tommy are. And finding kind of find out some information. Then we come back to them going to the command center. You see all these resorts, um, just like you know, in the ground and uh, destroyed. And some of these look like resorts that aren't even like I don't think they have these resorts yet. In the where where Billy and Jason were originally from, I think these resorts from later on. So that's kind of cool. See what they eventually are gonna get. Because I'm pretty sure, I don't think they had these orts yet when Tommy first joined, so it's cool. And then Tommy hears something, so he goes down this pit and finds these big open doors. He tries to open them, he's like, uh, should I? And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna open them and find out what's inside. He finds the, um, that, that, what's it called? Dag? I'm gonna look says Saber, who is the White Ranger's, like, little sword thing that talks. It's pretty cool, and I like how the idea of it talking, that kind of works. And it's cool. To him, so is this him gonna become the White Ranger? I think not. It might he might become the White Ranger in this specific Earth, but I don't think he's gonna. He might take this thing home. I don't, I don't know because he's. I don't think he's gonna become the White Ranger so soon. After because what, what's been going on since issue one to this series, not counting the issues that focus on specific characters like issue five and ten. Other than those, all these issues up to this point, continuing or continuing the story, and it feels like. They're gonna do the part of the White Ranger eventually, maybe, but they're doing stuff with the Green Ranger. So I don't think he's gonna. He still should be the Green Ranger by this point. So nothing wrong with that. But then Billy and then uh, up at the top, Billy, a bunch of uh, ships come in and like they're surrounded and stuff. And then the cool, the cool thing is, is a character who don't know who it is yet. But it's the White Ranger mixed with the Green Ranger. Like the costumes combined, like morphed into one, and it is awesome. It looks. It's hard because it looks like he could be a good guy or a bad guy. It's kind of like one of those ones that work both ways. Like, he make a pretty cool bad guy. Pretty cool good guy. So it's like, but he takes off the helmet at the end of the issue and we find out it is none other than Tommy. 
Tommy, of uh, Tommy, he looks different. It looks like an Udo Tommy. So that's why I'm thinking this is the future, uh, because of him being older. But this obviously could be another timeline. Like, who knows? But it's really cool. I, I'm excited for the next issue to see where this takes off. That's gonna come out like in the next two weeks. So I'm excited to read that. But we're not done yet. We got the ongoing adventures of Bulk and Skull. King and Bulk and Skull have the power. Have this thing Rita gave her the controls to the giant monster. They're using it to. To, you know, wreak havoc across the town. Nothing like, it doesn't do anything too bad so far, but you know, stuff where the power just need to get involved, giant monster. Hopefully, at the end, um, the power rangers come in, and it's like next, breaking bone, br- breaking bonus round. So the next issue is the power rangers are probably gonna fight it. And the thing with the ongoing rest of the bunk call, and that's it for that, because it's only two pages. And there's usually not that much to say on them. Sometimes there's more, sometimes there's not. There's not a lot to say with the ongoing mentions of Bunko because it's a two-page bonus comic that's in the issue. I like that because Bulk and Skull are pretty well-known characters in the Power Ranger universe. They have the two knuckleheads, so seeing them do, like, stupid things and go on their own kind of little adventure is fun. I, I do like this, and I like how the Power Rangers come in at the end, and they're going to be in the next issue maybe taking on this thing. I can't see what happens, so that's it for Power Rangers issue 11. I'm pretty cool. This is a, another pretty good book. I highly recommend this. This has been a highly good, like Kyle Higgins, he's amazing with this book. Go and check it out. But next we got to take a look at Spider-Gwen issue 16. This is part of Sitting in the Tree part 2. Uh, the comic book store, like a week or two after, I saw part 1, I looked through it. There wasn't much of Spider-Gwen in it. It was more about uh, my Marlis coming to her asking the mission, finding out about her father's on Spider Gwen's list, da da da. Not enough to where like I felt like I wanted to buy it for like four dollars. I will get part three because I think part three is gonna be maybe a decent, uh, have a decent chunk of the story that I I might need. I at least have enough to where I want to read that one next. So I will be looking out for that. That comes out this week, I think. So um, over when I'm recording this, this is issue. What did I say? Issue sixteen, right? Sixteen. Uh, it starts off with Spider Man, uh, Spider Man, yes, yeah, Spider Man, because my mouse is called Spider Man. Spider Man and uh, blah, blah, Spider Gwen talking, and then she went and got drinks and soda. And my mouse is like, I don't drink this stuff usually. And like, man, I can't drink this whole thing. It's like, you can't drink a whole soda. That seems a little weird, but yeah. And then they find out, she tell, he tells Spider Gwen about all the stuff with his dad, getting on a mission to come here and doing all this stuff. Cool. I like how when a dad leaps through the thing here, you see him, it's all blacked out. You see him leap through. He's leaping through like a Spider Man kind of thing. Like, that's hmm, questions. I don't know. That could be just the way they drew it. It's nothing, nothing to do with that. But then Gwen also says some stuff about her dad and what's going on with her and Frank and stuff. Some stuff about that. And then they hug it out. And that's the title and stuff. Sitting in a tree, part two. And then we get to the next page. Well, uh, but, you know, he gets this spider sense. It's like, and then you see ninjas, and he's like, oh, I have to take her away, even though the ninjas walk from Matt Murdock, who Spider Gwen is kind of, Gwen Stacy is kind of, in, not in pals with, but they aren't, like, go, there's not a thing that she's going to run away from, because they're kind of um, helping each other out, kind of. She's, he's giving him spider powers and stuff, and we know that's going to eventually go somewhere. I'm excited to see where that goes. There's a lot of stuff with this book that's, like, Stories aren't good, but it feels like so far, it feels like the last, they've been going like off track. And, oh, here's a Saint King special, Halloween special, a Christmas special. The Christmas special wasn't too bad because that one actually had a lot to do with the continuing the story. The Dick one has to do with the thing with my mouse. They're all cool, but they're not as good as just the focus on the story episodes. Those are usually the best ones with this series. And now we see a, a Spider Gwen falling, and he's like, hey, why are you falling? And then she has to use one of her power ups to save herself, uh, cause she doesn't have the powers like she used to, she uses these powers up, and she finds, and they find out, hey look, it's Matt Murdock, and then, uh, and she's like, uh, my wife's like, hey, you're the blind guy, the blind guy Matt Murdock, you can't see him, like, uh, and then Matt Murdock says, uh, I only know what people tell me, son, I simply listen, uh, he's like one of the guys who I like, he's one of my favorite characters in this universe, because he's cool, cause Matt Murdock being a bad guy in this, it's so cool, the way he's the way the voice drawn makes him look really badass. It makes him look like the a proper villain. So this might tell us right now that he might not be blind. He just wears those shades because they make him look cool or something. Uh, or he could be blind. Who knows? Um, so yeah, it's cool to see what is going on. And a uh, member that cuts, um, what you call it, uh, Mind Morales gives him a cut. 
så så en kind of saying hey I'm the boss here and he gives them and then they ask uh, for information about his dad he gives them a thing for Club Scorpion a VIP pass and then they go back to I guess it's their house uh Gwen Stacy's house I'm not sure whose house it's that or it's either theirs or it could be the next door maze or whatever I'm not sure I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd be her house probably I'm not sure but yeah, then they um, have the club, and they plan to go out. So he has his dress, and she's going in, like, all secretive and stuff. It was cool. And she says he has to leave the phone here. So he leaves the phone here, and then she gets into the club. with say, first of all, club's coffee and VIP pass, because he knows that's where all the stuff's going to be. He gets in there, and he does all kinds of weird stuff. Like, it looks like a giant grill and all this stuff. It's a really good place, but it's okay. And then we see, um, there's, it's like, right here, it says in the panel, a giant gorilla was weird. Yeah, how, do you just let giant gorillas in or something? I don't know. But in the sink, like, they're selling stuff, and you see all these weapons. Like, you see the attack master shield, uh, the wizard's mine helmet, two uh, cable plasma cannon. Cable pl plasma cannon, okay. Uh, attack master shield, like I said, super antium head and torso. Uh, Tarantium, man's armor, a bunch of, like, weapons for characters. And the Sarko's Gauntlets, Mark II, Iron Man armor, Fury grade eye pads, like all this stuff. And you're like, what's going on? All this stuff from the US. I think because they're uh, jumping. And then we see uh, this guy who, the Doc Ock's with the boy who's working for Silk. And then all this stuff in Peter Parker. Uh, not Peter Parker, my Morales, sorry. There's so many Spider Man, so getting, me getting confused when I say, oh, Spider Man, I usually say Peter Parker. Obviously, I gotta remember. This one's my Morales, not Peter Parker. He attacks the... Punches out um, Dr. Oswald and the electrocutes the octopus whatever was on a uh, squid or whatever's on um, his uh, her face and gets it out. And she gets on her power cobbler. And then Spider-Man finds his dad. Uh, you always... You, you're awfully scorned to be any kind of man. And he's like, Dad, to be continuing, Spider-Man is just a team. Okay, so I'm going to be... So the way this ends, I feel like I'm going to be picking up Spider-Man issue 13 because I feel like I'm one of the ones that... It's going to give me enough because jumping to fourth issue... Uh, what is it? 17 for this one? Yeah. 17 to this one because the two parts in each. He's going to be a bit of a jump. I feel like it's going to be a gap and I feel like it'd be nice to know what happens in that middle. And then I'll go get Paul 1 eventually in back issues. But we also have a Spider-Man my mind that's like... Um, Duck West has, like, his origin, his name, all this information about him and stuff. Uh, a bio about him. What's cool? Because this is the first time we appeared in this book, so that's cool. Half by going doing that with any time a new character that comes kind of in. So that's cool. And then it says at the end, You want to know what happens next? Don't miss Spider-Man 13. It says the cover for it. Looks fun, so I'm excited to read that. Oh, uh, that's it for Spider-Man issue 16. Not a bad issue. Um, it's weird, because when I got this, I was like, oh, this is part two of a story arc. Do I need to, I uh, wonder, do I need to get part one or part one that irrelevant? I think you can jump into, if you're reading just Spider-Gwen, this issue, specifically, you can jump in. Do you need to get part one? It would help. It probably gives you more information and does some more stuff. It wouldn't be hurt, but you don't have to. You don't have to jump into issue D, part one of this. I think part two, it gives you the information you need for in case you're not reading Spider-Man. You can just get this book and be fine. Now, I don't know if the next issue, how much it's going to tell you what happens in, you know, issue 13. I might say you might need to get that one. I don't know. Have to wait because I know Sp Spider-Man comes out this week and I think Spider-Man comes out next week. So, so it'll be like coming out like that. Uh, but yeah, that's all we're going to talk about for that one. Next, we move on to Mr. As we're speaking about Gwen Stacy, we're going to talk about Gwenpool, the other Gwen card with Gwen in the title. We have Spider-Gwen and Gwenpool. How many more Gwens are we going to get? Who knows? Maybe we'll get one with just a regular Gwen Stacy. Who knows? But this is the unbelievable Gwenpool. And I'm going to say this right now. My favorite book I'm over right now. Yeah. Out of, now, I'm not reading everything. I'm only reading, like, a couple books. I'm only reading Spider-Gwen, Gwenpool, Slastic. And I was reading Cage, but it ended because it was only a four-issue series by Grandy Tarkovsky. What will we be talking about next after this? But... Out of all the books I'm reading, this is the best one. Um, now, if I got more books, like um, Old Man Logan, Doctor Strange, Steel and Captain America, some of the other ones are really good. I've heard stuff up. My list might change, but as of right now, it's Gwenpool, and I have read some of the other ones. Um, they're okay. I just, I like Gwenpool. I just like, I like it better than, a little better than Deadpool, I know. I like it. It's a little more, I don't know, what's, it's just a, it feels like a fun book, and it's funny, it's fun, and the, it's just awesome. This is issue 10. This ends, I guess, you could say the first, I don't know if this can sound as the first story arc, but the first 10 issues kind of, you can read them all in order. The first 10 issues kind of go one after the other, 
because it's, it's it feels like it's just one big story arc. Now there might be when they do it in graphic novels, this is kind of like a story arc, this story, but kind of all kind of goes together where you can just read them the first ten issues in order. And then after that, they're doing like uh, single story issues. And Grand Ball comes out this week too. That's gonna be cool. I can't wait to read that. Uh, first we start off in Greybridge, Brooklyn, where there's two old people in a um, house, you know, because uh, they were were told to evacuate, and for some reason, and for reasons why, these two are not evacuating. I'm not going to say why they are not evacuating, because it says that later in the book, so we'll talk about that, and she looks out the window, the guy looks at the window, sees the car getting smashed by a giant. The robot that, um, Gwenpool is driving the big thing, the hideout, Modoc's hideout, that she's now taking over, and now she's kind of like the boss of. He's going in to save everybody. He's going to save, um... Uh, the little pig dressed up as her and the other three members, I, I uh, Bava, B-A-T, oh, see, the guy who has, like, the fence accent, I can never say his name for some reason, I don't know why his name is one of those names, I don't know how to say it, Bava, I want to say, I want to say Bav, Bav, but that's not, but uh, it's probably some f- Frenchy style name, I don't know, I'm not going to cry and say it, because I don't know, but it's him and two other people who work for who work with Modoc, but then CB Modoc and now she's uh, taking over. And I don't know why Modoc hasn't come back and like trying to take over yet. You think that's? I know that's eventually he's gonna come back and shit's gonna go down. But until then, and I, I think you talk about I go off on stuff. So um, also the ghost is with him. The ghost is with her, and all the aliens have their own a bunch of ships. They were invisible and now they uncloak, and there's a bunch of them. There's one, two, three, four, five, at least six of them. So that, and she's kind of like, oh, where's the button, where's the button? And then the ghost is like, it's right here, it's here. It's like, it's right here! And he gets really frustrated, it's like, oh, right. And then like, crazy, you see him. And then like, with all the guns coming out of the ship, and there's like, tons of shit. And then she's laughing, and he's like, uh, now what do I push? I don't know what to push. And he's like, I don't know what to push again. It's like, it's kind of, it's that stupid, but it's kind of like, funny. It's like, uh, this book is just so, it's, it does everything right. It's like one of those ideas, I was like... You know, I'm going to give it a crack. I'm going to get the first issue. You're going to see if I like it. I think I got the first two issues, so I got to read those. I got them at the same time, so I got to read them. I enjoyed it so much, I was excited to read more of the series, and I kept continuing. I've been continuing on with this series because it is so... My favorite comic of Marvel now. This is my favorite comic. This is the one comic, like, yeah, I got to get over... Out of everything in Marvel, this is the one comic I'm going to be getting regularly. Like, everything else can... I can drop some of the other stuff, but this one is a no... No problem. And that's so the guy who was like the Doom bot who has who um got like the human skin and everything and can talk now. He's like stop and he's like, No, stop, I don't want you to destroy this town. Like he doesn't want innocent people to get hurt. So you see then they uh, start firing, have the gun pointed at these the two old people who didn't leave because they walked outside to see what was going on. And then he's like, No. It's like and the grandpa's like, Yeah, I'm gonna fire at these old people if you don't do what I say and help. It's like then she's like like damn you, and then he's like has to help, and he helps. He starts to save the day, and he starts firing at the alien. Uh, starts firing at the alien ships, and gets one of them, and it starts crashing. And he, I make sure nobody's in the house before it crashes. For the giant thing crashes, uh, the plane crashes. So he is kind of, I would say, he, I wouldn't tell him my general event because he does care about like the regular people. He does care about him. He doesn't want him to, you know, anything to happen to him. But then you see. Gwen Project attacking everybody and doing stuff and then they shoot with like one of the legs and then it falls. And then we find out also in the basement and also in another part of the base is Ronnie, the seamstress, the person who does all the costumes and stuff and does like the has the odd jobs like for assassins and people and stuff. It's cool. Because he's not a villain, she's like a lot of people she's not a villain, she okay, she does costumes help does costumes for superheroes and stuff, that's cool. And she did some of her documentary. She's not a villain, she has her jobs. That uh, she get paid for, and then you see the door opens at the bottom of the sink, and gets comes running out a bunch of men dressed like Grandpa, like a bunch of muscly men dressed in Grandpa's outfit, and that's just something you're like, that's what I, something I was expecting, because in last week we saw Modoc had a bunch of men, had actually had a, like an army of men, had an army of guys ready to go, and they're like, yeah, we've been we want a mission or something, and then we're back, and we're like, oh, it's like oh, all this stuff is going on. And they come in and start shooting all these aliens and doing all this stuff and start taking out the aliens and all that stuff. And they just start winning the thing. And then one of the other uh, machines in the sky starts shooting at it. It basically shoots the ship and basically almost destroys it. Like, it's pretty damaged. 
and they're trying to escape. So they escape out of it. The whole thing, uh, it's about to fall, and it's about to fall on the old, the two old people. Like, yeah, they're about to fall on them. It's going forth. Like, probably doesn't even know that that's what's happening. That's probably too busy worrying about anybody else. And then the one guy saves obviously them and throws to save the old people, and then throws the thing out of the way, the doom bot, and then throws at the other alien ship, and they all just blow off. And like, who will afford to pursue Gwenpool? You are probably a say, uh, like, we were a fool to pursue Gwenpool. I'm like, I don't know if you were a fool, but I, I didn't even think, how, how do you pull something off? Like, somebody who doesn't have any superpowers, and if I'm a universe where comic books, where all this all this stuff in the Marvel Universe, it's just comics. Like, and her, she's from a different Earth, and her has all this, that she's living, all these people she's meeting are just comic book characters, so it's weird to see, like, something like that. You can do something like this. Like, if it's just, I think that's why this book is, I also like that, when there's a lot of stuff, like, hey, when a comic book uh, kind of makes you know she's in the comic book kind of thing, so that's kind of funny. But is that the case of why isn't she, like, in that universe, why isn't she, when she was, before the universe, why was she not, have, had her comics in that universe? Now, it could have been, for a lot of reasons, um, it could have been for probably just because that, that was probably different. Thing. It might have a lot of the same stuff, but some stuff would have been different. It's kind of generally kind of similar to ours. Back to Toy. He does a lot of steps. Everything turns out to be a happy ending. He talked to the one police. She'd been like, yeah, everything's okay. We're fine or whatever. And the two old people are like, hey, we have a phone. Hey, look, your phone. It looks like you have some missed calls. I'm like, Cause his phone was missing, so that's why he didn't get the car to evacuate like everybody else did. And that's funny. You never see the Doom bar. Uh, doing some stuff on TV. Um, all the guys came in and they're like, sir, you saved this neighborhood from an alien attack and all this stuff. And then all the um, Gwenpool people, all the guys who were dressed up at Gwenpool are getting into the police thing because they are getting arrested. And then the team basically breaks up. The team breaks up. Um, Gwenpool and all the team breaks up. It's kind of a little sad because I'm like, I've just gone to like this team. It's like they, we've been through so much together. Ten issues. Ten issues. Basically... Ten, maybe nine uh, issues you don't want really to count the first issue. They might not have been really in the first issue. They weren't much in the first issue. But really, we've been f- with the team since almost since the beginning of the series. And it's like, we the team leave now. But they are going to come back. Um, so yeah, they eventually will come back in the series. I know at least the ghost will, because he's going to come back. But we still have Gwenpool, and we have the, um, uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, tch, Ronnie. So that's cool. And it's like, yes. And then my favorite line, I got, I wanted to say this, because he's like, kind of, you still got jobs with me, you can still get jobs with me and all this stuff. And my favorite line, I'm going to say this. I usually, if there's a line I really like, I would like to say it, because it's just so, it's the last line in the book. It's not really a spoiler or anything. It's like, because, he's just like, great. Because I'm, it's like, you can still get jobs from Ronnie if you want. And he's like, great. Because I'm in a, because, he's like, oh, blah, 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 blah. I messed up, I'm going to do it again. You can still get jobs from money if you want, and then she's like, great, because I'm in the mood for the most insane, self-destructive, and then my favorite line, you ready to believe me, editors, fucking stupid, dangerous job you've ever got. I just said that, because I don't know which one it was. It could have been shit, I don't know. Shit, stupid, I think it's fucking stupid, dangerous, yeah. Job you've got, that's just so funny, that little joke about, you ready to believe me, I was like, yeah, then let's get ready. I'm gonna about to say something really bad, and, and it says "whoop" at the end, and then we get into the next issue. What's really cool? Uh, so it's um, what I have read. It says her, and it looks like she's gonna have to do some vampires and zombies and skeletons and stuff. It's gonna be a fun issue. Can't wait to talk about that on the podcast. Cause I have read that at this point, and it's really good. That came out not that long. Uh, it came out like last week. So yeah, but now we got uh, not last week, two weeks ago. Now we get to the last two books we're going to be talking about in this podcast. We got first, the last, the end, to one of probably maybe my second favorite, or maybe this one like kind of like a tad. I don't know. What's up to this one? Gwenpool, my two favorite comics that Marvel is Cage. This is a four issue series. Grandy Teleskovsky, who is amazing. This is one of the books I know I didn't talk about on the. Um, it's one of the podcasts that I wanted to talk about. Because it's the final issue. I think I said I didn't want to talk about I wanted to talk about this because uh, it's so great and it's the final issue. And I like how I said at the beginning on the cover, dang, kid's got knocked out of his own comic. He's suddenly getting hit and he's like getting knocked out like off the cover. 
So it was really cool saying I like the and I like this. Grandy Teletkoski, if you don't know who he is, he's drawing and writing this book, so that's amazing. He's amazing at his art work and his story is amazing. If you don't know what he does, he did a couple of shows like Samurai Jack, Dexter's Laboratory, and I think he helped on uh, what was the other show, Johnny Bob. I think he helped on that one. I know he helped on another one. I think it was that one. So he did two great shows and helped on another. He's like he did all some of the best shows on Cartoon Network. Sam I Jack is one of the best shows on Cartoon Network, if not my favorite show of all time. One of my favorite shows of all time. It's up there in like top five, at least ten. Um, because I don't really have a list unless till I, I mean I have kind of a list in my head of these are some of these, these ones are definitely on it, but I don't know have any particular order of what ones are in what order they go in, but I do have them a list. And it's in the top ten for sure. Probably in the top five. But back to the comic. Where do we leave off? Well Cage is on an island, obviously trapped. And he has to fight his way through all these guys. Because everybody else is losing for some reason. And that's kind of one of the other problems I have. It's a book like, certain people are losing. And we'll show, it's just some of them in this one. But this is the case, find a giant hippo. He to open his mouth. He's quite like, scared. And, like, he's like, blah. He just, wham, one punch. And, and, and he basically knocks him out. And the, one of the other things I want to say about this artwork that's really cool. Grandy Teroskowski, Grand, Grandy Teroskowski's art. Is something that reminds me of something I would see on Cartoon Network. Kids Art Dog is like Cartoon Network. It's like the old school Cartoon Network, and I like that. It feels like something that I would see on Cartoon Network, especially the old school Cartoon Network, like Dexter's Lab, Toy Time, I Check, all the stuff. So it's like that era, so that's one of the things I like. His artwork really fits that style. Instead, like a lot of shows, that stuff, it makes me like the comic even more. But as the comic goes on, we see Dazzler. You know, Dazzler is another one who was cast to using a light beams on this tiger thing, and the tiger just bam, punches him one hit. Okay, that's a little more believable because that's was not the greatest hero, but I feel like she had her own comic run. I feel like she can do more than one hit. Then we have Brother Voodoo as the, um, what's his, um, as, uh, I'm trying to look what it's called. Uh, I'm trying to, it's to say what his, I'm calling on his power, his ghostly brother, Daniel, okay, he's his ghostly brother or whatever. He's about to hit him and then he looks like he's knocked down one hit. He should be knocked down one hit. Now then we see K's, uh, Crocodile, like, bite his head and like it looks like all the teeth like break and then he punches it oh that's so fun and then the one that makes me chill with my head is Ghost Rider okay good credit pretty strong this bear punches him and that looks like it like that can't be it that can't be how you that's that all the other ones I can kinda I could be like okay yes but Ghost Rider that's why I tell the line cause I am a Ghost Rider fan enough to be like yes a little um yeah, that's the only thing I'm gonna be like, yeah, no, 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 no. The comic zone is perfect. That's one of the things I'm like, no. Ghost Rider shouldn't, by a punch, he's Ghost Rider. He doesn't have, like, flesh. He's just bones. He's like, he's like a demon. He's, like, not really a person. You can't just punch him and he's out. You can't really, it's really hard to knock him out. You can't really, like, knock him out. It's a normal person. You have to take, it's really hard to do, and I don't think these guys being in one punch, I don't know how they do it. There's those, obviously, Kay's being another member of this group, a, gi a giant walrus and stuff. And all these guys are like animals, so it's kind of cool. There's okay Kay talking to the leader, and like, he's like, hey, what do I win? Money. He's like, you're very, f like, what do I win for all this internet being the first one? He's like, money. He's like, oh, you're very funny. And he like, tries to tell this backstory. And every time Kate's like, hold it, ain't no way I'm gonna listen to your origin story after what you just put me through. And like, his speech bubbles are covering up his, so you can't see his origins. And I, I, oh, that's funny. That's, that's just funny. I like that. That's funny. The book has a comedy sense, why I like to it, and it's funny. It's just, it's, that's was really kind of, I, I really thought that was funny when I first read it. And it still is. And then he says, and he says to you, what you in? And he's like, and show that your grandpa is me. And then Cage is like, Oh man, I'm gonna puke because he takes off his like cloak or whatever, and he's like, "Oh man, I'm gonna puke." He's like, "Ha ha, very funny cage." Like he and he's making a joke like, "You want a prize?" Oh god, and he's like, "You're gonna fight me, kid." And kid's like, "Nah, I'm not gonna fight you. I'm, I'm gonna get out of here." And then he hits, then he goes over and wham, hits cage in the back, and he's like, "Fine, you want to fight? We're gonna fight." And he just then he starts fighting cage, and he's kicking the crap out of him. A whole page of him getting beat the crap out of him. Cage is a guy who has. Is strong, like he's he's super strong. Like he's in this guy just by punching him. There's a squad guy, and then this is a page him doing a bunch of small moves. And he's like, guy from here, look at Cage, he's beat up. That's not easy to do, mind you. Where he looks all beat up and stuff. And he grabs his foot, and it's like, hey, I'm not done yet. And then he gets all determined, and then he starts cramming this crap out and punching teeth out. 
beating the crap out of him and then they're kind of like fighting on even terms for like he does a punch, he does a punch. Like, you know, it's more even a fight and just them fighting for the next couple pages. And then he gets the upper hand and starts kicking the crap out of him and then does one vinyl hit, boom, and beats him. And that goes great back to it goes from him doing a giant page for him, bam, hitting him and beating him. Now it's New York City a few days later and it's just him and it's raining and he goes to a favorite place, a restaurant for... Like you see, so he can get noodles or something. And then he goes in the place because they were closed for a, what does it say? Closed for party party. And we find out inside it's all his friends and it's cool. You see everybody we have. Uh, everybody's here. We have Scarlet Witch, Spider-Man, Iron Fix, Dr. Greens, Moon Dragon, Goliath, Cyclops, Black Panther, Invisible Woman, Brother Voodoo, Misty Knight, Captain America, Saw, Wonder Man, Hawkeye, Colossus, it's a fantastic thing. Uh, Human Torch. Everybody's here. Uh, Spider Man? Did I say Spider Man? Invisible Woman? Cyclops? I don't know. But it's like every. It's not a picture of everybody. And it's really cool to see him drawing all these different characters. It's really cool. Uh, I really like this. And this is where the book ends. And yeah, this book is great. I would actually recommend this book. For four, by, for four issues, it's only being four issues. It is probably my favorite book to come out of Marvel next to Gwenpool. It's probably my second favorite. And it's, it feels different than a lot of the other books, but it's so good. I highly recommend reading it. Four issues, I wouldn't, I would totally recommend. Give it a shot. It's four issues. You're going to enjoy it. But now we get into the last book of the podcast. And how long have we been going? We're going for about, it looks like 36 minutes. So we have time. So we do have enough time to talk about one more. And we're going to. So it doesn't matter how long these podcasts are. We're going to talk about all the comics I have. And then if I do have extra time, we'll talk about stuff. Well, this one's going to be long enough. I'm not going to add extra time. Next, we got Kid Carson, has something that got issue four, written by, for DC Young Animals, edited by Great War, and it's the only DC book that came out this week. If you don't know what DC Young Animals is, it's where they're doing a bunch of great comics like Kid Carson, has something that guy, Doom Patrol, Shadow the Tentacle, and Mother Panic, all great series. You should be reading all of them. This is by Great Ward. You don't know who Great Ward, he is the guy who basically created DC Young Animals, and he did most of stuff he wrote this book Cape Carson has Simon that guy he's writing Doom Patrol where both books are amazing he helped create a Mother Panic I think the design or something of it and he created this whole imprint to these young and old imprint to do these comics and all these comics are mature just like you know they're very mature comics so have that in mind and also if you don't know who Greg Ward is uh, you might know who he is um, because he is the lead singer to a band called My Chemical Romance where I was like I didn't know that I was like Oh, cool. I'm reading a book by the guy who does My Cat Corner. It's a band I actually do like. So, yay. That's really cool. And also, this book, uh, Kate Carson has a stabbing eye. Kate Carson has a stabbing that guy. Uh, has art by um, Michael Alvin Omings. Michael Omings. I don't know how to say the middle name. You know, he, he does uh, stuff with. I know he did a Powers. That's why I know him from, and I do like his artwork. So, it's cool to see in this book. And, yeah, let's jump into it. My first off is shows some backstory of. Um, I kind of remember, it's hard, because I don't read these, uh, I kind of remember the name of this, I think it's Chloe, I think, why do I, why do I feel like this is Chloe, uh, who is a cave's daughter, why am I saying Chloe, I think it says at the end of this, doesn't it, so I can just kind of get a click, and no, it does not, that was in the last issue or so, it doesn't say it, but it's her and, like, her mom and stuff talking, I think, and they're talking about stuff, but then we go back to, is you have Kate Carson, some like I, called City of the Ghosts, and this is part whatever, I guess it's part four, I guess. I saw the split in part, definitely didn't have a part. It doesn't say like part five, and my nose is a little runny, so sorry if that is a thing. I'm on the last one, so we need to get this going. Um, they're fighting off all these uh, creatures, or not fighting off creatures, but they see um, Cave uses his eye, and he sees like all this stuff, and he's like, he wants to figure, and he's trying to figure out what's going on, what's happening, and he gets this, um, Saying with like a light, and he finds out, it's, and he finds it's well, whatever. And he's like, it's still beautiful, and doing all stuff and takes whatever the stuff is. Um, a little bit of it, whatever the fluid is. I don't know what it actually is. And we might find out later when he finds out that uh, we have some of the men who he was walking for uh, down here dead. So you know, it's just been going down. And they find this giant door, and they try to figure out how to open it. Then. Mr. Wild Dog, who is in this, if you know, Wild Dog's in this, and that alone made me want to hit this book. I didn't know he was in this till I went to pick it up, 
I was going to my local comic book store, and I went to pick up issue one. And I was looking through it, and I'm like, I'm going to probably, this is book, I was 99% going to get it. It was like, old time. I, I was going to get it anyway. But at the end, when I saw Wild Dog's costume hanging up there, I was like, oh shit, this is what I'm getting uh, now 100%. But so was Wild Dog going crazy, and he sticks like the gun in his mouth, about to like shoot himself. And that's, oh, then, uh, you know, um, what's my call it? And uh, K comes in and saves him. From all this stuff, and then he sees something. <laughs> well, I think it's his wife. I'm not sure. On one of the people from this underground civilization, and all this stuff, and then he eventually gets the thing. Or at least I think they close it. They close it because when they opened it, all this stuff went bad, and they close it, and everything's fine. But then a crack starts going through this uh, hole in the wall, and then there's other the guys who work for the company came and walked upon now after him because they have some secret thing that. Uh, the boss is trying to do like, like, hey, I'm evil. The boss is evil and he's trying to do shit with this. So, yeah. If we're now cave, it's not the boss because then he and his men, him and the original people he was with when the, back in the way days, uh, didn't, didn't they start this? At least start this, um, you know, them going on the ground doing stuff. Him and his other couple of teammates. So, couldn't, shouldn't they be running the company, not this guy? Unless that guy was one of his old teammates. And now he's, you know, his own thing. But they go out to try to reason with him, and then, like, oh, like, yeah, no, we're not going to reason with you. And then these aliens come down and basically chop one of the guy's heads off and cuss one of the other guys. One of the guys gets his head chopped off. It's like, oh, shit. You, then you're like, oh, shit, this is going downhill fast. And they start shooting these monsters. And then Cave causing, uh, they start attacking him, almost kills another one. And Cave shoots the thing and basically saves them. And it's like, don't make this a war, Johnny. Take them home. Then then he's like, get in, we're getting out of here. The one guy's like, yeah, we're getting out of here. Then like the other guy's like, no, we're on a mission, we're going to do it. It's like, no, I don't know what... It's like The one guy's like, no, it's like now, I think he's like, something's going on here, this is not right, this isn't what's going on, nothing, everything is wrong, we need to go back. And the other guy's like, no, 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 we're going to complete the mission no matter what. Like what he said, we're going to do this no matter what. And then he's like, uh, baby hush, yeah, sometimes tell me... Like saying like how I was reading that for a second, sorry if it pops up that we should have the fine print of our jobs and stuff that we all should have. And it's like it's a cool thing and I like this. And then we see them going deeper into the uh, them going into the cave and they finally find some of these uh the guys they were looking for. And I like how one of them has like a gossip shit with a I it says I that has a bat like for Batman and then Gotham. I Batman Gotham or I Bat Gotham. I don't know. But it's like, it could be like an I love Gotham. And the bat is kind of like the love symbol. Um, it's really cool um, to see that little reference to Gotham City there. So we know that, hey, this is part of the DC Universe. I like the reference like, to say, hey, this is part of the DC Universe. And that's cool. And then we take him back to the tribe. And, like, Cave obviously knows who these guys are and stuff. So that helps. And he gives him this thing about his daughter. And he shows, uh, shows this thing about their daughter. And then how the, she died. And, like, he's getting really sad. But he's like, yeah. I think he's really sad, and I feel like with K, uh, Kate Carson, I feel like he's, they're not going to, like, oh, we're just going to kill you, Kate. It's all your fault. So, uh, no, it's not his fault. It could, I mean, technically, I could see ways you could say it's his fault, but I like to see what happens next. That's basically it for Kate Carson. We have the last two pages. We see the bad guy, and with some cloak figures, obviously, because when you see a bad guy, he has a room full of cloak figures doing evil things, obviously. And we find out here's a guy who's trapped to this thing. And the, has this machine hooked up to him and like sucking stuff out of him. I don't know what the deal this is. I don't know who this is. Is this the one of those guys from the underground places? Is anybody? I don't know what they're doing, but they're basically t- torturing him would be a good way of describing it. And then to, to be continued, I'm excited to see where this goes. This book has been amazing. Can't wait for the next issue. Don't know if it comes out this month. I'm going to have to take a look on that. Uh, next would be issue, I think, five? Fourth issue, yeah, four. I'm excited. Issue five. It's one of the books that I've been really enjoying. And it's been good. And then we get some bonus comics. It does, uh, you see almost all the DT Young Animals have bonus comics, different stuff. Uh, Cape Carlton has his own bonus comic, except the ones will have the ones where it changes. Uh, kind of a certain style, though. This one's called, uh, he, uh, he has, uh, like, three pages for each. This one has a thing with this guy. He's called Etrigan, who is a, like, um, uh, t- him and looks like the Spectre. And then, like, angels and stuff. It's a weird, it's weird kind of little story. It's like, this one's like a page kind of story. This is the next page, the continuing this thing. It's called Superpowers. It's called Superpowers by Tom Skull. It's a three page comic, and they're kind of like, they're kind of funny, 
I guess comics plus it's hard to tell what they are because it's weird. It jumps around. Like the first page has a story featuring this like um the two angels. One is like Etrigan, one's called Etrigan and the other one's called I think it looks like Fan of Grants, I think he's Fan of Change. Or version of Fan of Change. It's weird. And sometimes they can be funny uh, taking on the character. And then we see a comic featuring the Wonder Queens with kinda it's left on a page cool. And then we have this other page where it has Back or what she was in another one, so that's kind of cool. Her taking one woman out of a plane, a demon of the because he was knocked out. And then the bottom, he has a green lantern, and one of them looks like to be like IG88. is a green lantern, well, I think it's cool. Earth belongs to OS. I don't know what's going on with these boy comics, and I don't know what to do with those all, but yeah, I'm super excited to find out. I don't know, I'm kind of excited, because these are kind of like, I do read these, because they are kind of like fun, they have an old school look to them. I really do like them, and next one looks to be funny. Then we get some bonus stuff at the end from Mother Panic. Uh, we get to see her like helmet and her, her helmet and her sing she rides on her sing that flies, her, uh, whatever it's called. I don't know what's called. I'm looking the glider and the helmet. So we get to see her sing the glider, the sing she rides around in or flies around in because it flies and her helmet. More about that. And we get two other character files. We get on, uh, we got uh, the two characters. Yeah, we have Doctor Status Furman. And the other one is, who's the name? Rebecca Page. Okay. So we got character files and both of that for like how at the end of each of the Vertigo books, uh, DTA and books, like for this month, usually they had the same character files for each month. So they're going to have the character files on her. So the, it would be cool if they did it for like Mother Panic had the Mother Panic or Mother Panic character files and the Doom Patrol had Doom Patrol character you know, for each book and stuff. That would be actually kind of cool. But then you have to think about they have to write all this stuff out. We'll probably have the story and stuff planned out but like I don't know and then that's basically it for this issue I, to, uh, to kick on the stuff I got it's a great book I like it cause I saw Kick Austin it's a character it's a real character it's a cool thing they put him back in a way it's fun it's really fun and Wild Dogs in it so that's that's pretty cool pretty freaking cool and that's it for this issue so we one two three four five six so we talked about six different comics today only one dc comics only one came out the one dc young animal free marvel and then two indie so not a bad day of talk about comics so that's it for this video guys hope you guys liked this episode of the all new all different reboot cast where i talk about my favorite comics that i my favorite comic and the comics the, basically the comics i'm getting week to week so that's it for this episode guys hope you guys enjoy you guys can always Stay epic, and I'll see you on the next or new different Rebirth cast. Bye, guys.